Hey, welcome back to Building Mac Makes. Today I'm going to show you how I made this feature wall behind me pretty inexpensively and pretty simply uh, using some MDF with a little bit of uh, adhesive and a few nails to hold it in place and I think you'll agree it looks pretty great. The first thing you're going to want to do is plan out how much material you're going to need. And so I did a quick model on SketchUp with the dimensions of my wall, which were three feet wide by seven feet tall. And I figured out that uh, the shape of the rectangle that I would need would be a six inch by 24 inch. Uh, I cut off a 45 that was going to go against either wall because I wanted the butt ends to go next to each other. See, there's a difference between herringbone and chevron. And what we were going for is the herringbone, where you have your butt ends going, but they're staggered, versus having the points come together. That is your chevron pattern. If you have any questions afterwards, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'm pretty good at responding to those. So let's dive right in by ripping down my material according to my cut list. After taking off the long rips that will be the picture frame around the outside, I break it apart into more manageable pieces so I can make those six inch rips on my table saw. You can see with a little bit of careful planning, you will end up with just a nibble coming off the last piece. So after making, I think about 22 of these rectangles, I was ready to put the 45 on the end because I said we're going for that herringbone pattern. So these 45s are what, gonna, what are going to butt up against the wall. And these are going to have to be scribed, some of them, because um, like many of your homes, the walls in your house are not perfect. Now one thing I did find is that the factory edge was not perfect either. So you can see here, I want these butt ends to come together tight but I had a little bit of a gap there. So I checked my chop saw for square and I went over and just trimmed off a little bit on the edge. And now you can see that these guys are butting up against each other beautifully. Checking it for square there. And that's a nice tight seam. You can see how important it is to put an edge profile. When those come together, you can't see it at all. So what I settled on after testing out a few samples was this chamfer. Just a simple 45 degree cut coming down about an eighth of an inch. And then I go ahead and I put that profile around um, three of the sides. Uh, the one with the 45 doesn't matter because it's going to be covered up. As I say, we're going to be putting a bit of a picture frame around this entire thing. So definitely want to have your dust collection working for this it produces a lot of dust now I am marking out some reference lines on the wall center line and you can see how out of center that light was because uh, there is a stud running right down the center and so uh, they had originally offset it I used a little pancake box and moved it to the center so now I'm gonna put out Put on some lines. I marked my 45. The first one is critical that you get this one on perfectly and then everything else is just going to stack on top. So what I noticed is the center of this rectangle is going to be on that center line. So what I did is I measured out and found the center of that rectangle and so I knew exactly where to put it. There you can see the center line what I did is I thought it would be a lot easier if I marked out two more lines where the top corner of each of these boards is going to sit. So I held that one in place, carefully stacked on the next one, made sure it was perfectly flush, and then I marked that out. Then I used my laser level and I transferred these lines onto the wall with a pencil. This is going to make it really straightforward to just keep stacking these blocks on top of each other as we work our way up and then down from our first pieces. The whole thing is going to go on with some adhesive, some good PL construction adhesive, and a couple of 18 gauge brads 
just to tack it in. Um, I'm putting no brads through the middle, but as I said, there is a stud that is in the center of the wall, so right where these butt joints come together, and of course there's a stud in the corner. So I can kind of put one or two in the center and another in the corner. So when you're laying on that first one, you want to get that top point of the board right on that left line. You can see some other lines I marked on the wall with X's. Those are uh, the water, the drain pipes, and the, the vent. And I wanted to make sure I remembered where those were. I wasn't planning on shooting any nails through the middle, but just to be safe. So this one, when you get it lined up, you really want to sort of make sure right there I'm feeling that they are perfectly flush, okay, and that the point should be right on that third line, and then just pack that one in place couple into that stud in behind the center of the wall and then over in the corner and then you're flying once you get your first couple on and they're perfect you just keep layering it but what you really want to make sure is that it is perfectly flush with the board that it's joining up to you want these seams to be tight because that chamfer is giving you that beautiful detail. So you can see that I've added this chamfer. You can really see the shadow lines that it creates where these boards come together. The MDF is so smooth that if you didn't add this chamfer, it would just look like a plain flat wall. So you really want to get this sort of almost like a tile type feature. This is so much easier than laying tile though. I wouldn't want to mess around with the tile. Uh, this, you know, as a woodworker, so much better. So here you go, uh, trying to work around some obstacles. So going down for my first one, I was going to encounter the drain pipe for the sink. So I just laid the first one on top and generally marked out where it was. It is going to be behind the vanity, so it absolutely doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you want to do um, as well as you can here and. So, you know, if you happen to have a bandsaw, terrific, but this can easily be cut out um, with a jigsaw. And you add that adhesive, and here you can see it's just going to snugly cut right on top of that. And then below it, um, you can see just the next one. And if you have all your pieces ready to go, they all just kind of go in lickety split. Uh, this really did go pretty quickly uh, once you're going. One tip I would give you here is when you start to get towards the top and you're not using full pieces anymore, before you attach a piece, like this one right here, before I attached it, I measured the short angles because they become the long lengths on the piece that goes in right there. So you can see there'll be a little triangle missing and all I had to do was measure from the, the second last piece that went in what that length was and I was able to get it ready. Now I bought the standard kills sort of, they have a few different varieties of how you know severe stain blocking do you need. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was really disappointed with the quality of, of this uh, primer. I thought, you know, this is a perfectly clean wall. There's no stains. I don't need any real stain blocking. It's not like I'm covering up knots and pine. Uh, this stuff was almost like water. It, it wasn't great. I did have to put a few coats of this on and a little bit painstaking, but I really wanted to make sure I got it right into the cracks. Sanded it down to get a smooth surface, taped everything up, and then this was our matte finish black paint. Um, that I put on with a um, spray gun. Just the, my air compressor, air compressor with a low, like 40 PSI. And I know I should have had a mask on and I got, got started and then didn't want to stop. So my bad, but the finish turned out fantastic. Uh, so happy with it. And then to deal with those gaps, I just used those long rips. They were about an inch wide and I did put that same 45 degree chamfer on these. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Uh, consider hitting that uh, like and subscribe button and tune back in to see the vanity build 
next week. Thanks for watching.